Hello again. My name is Alfonso Ashworth and I teach a photography course called Light Vision Art. If you have taken my course or you are now taking my online course, you will be familiar with some of the things we'll discuss today in this lesson. The, th the lesson today is going to be about zoning or the way Ansel Adams discussed it, he would have reflected that in some of his work quite extensively so I would suggest you you know try to do your research on the table I have here today are some books that is about the zoning and about Ansel Adams uh, this one here is called the camera um, then there's another copy of a book called the negative or in our terms today the censor and then of course the print now the print would have been something he would have worked on in a dark room and also he would have developed his negatives also in a dark room. Uh, this item here is an enlarger and we use this to make our prints in the dark room. Uh, of course you need the camera. This would have been a focusing aid. This here is a timer and the far device to the right is what we call a safe light that would have allowed us to work in the dark room and not ruin our film or our papers. Um, in my book this our workbook in class on page number 37 there's a segment in here called let's start zoning my way and when I get ready to go to the whiteboard in just a second that you will see over here on the split screen you should be able to see some of the uh, information that we're going to discuss but right now let's go back and we're going to talk about <clears throat> the things that we're going to be discussing with the camera as well Inside of your camera, of course, <clears throat> are the items or the mechanics that we've discussed, the shutter and the aperture, and of course your sensor, and then this camera as well. The problem that a lot of photographers have when they start trying to zone, one, they're not patient, and two, they're not willing to put that time in that it takes to do the zone. So I'm going to walk over to the whiteboard, and we're going to talk about doing the zone. As you can see, I've started here, and we'll erase this in just a second, too, because we're going to take a second. Zone my way. Well, a zone is your grayscale, as I've discussed in the workbook and also on my online course. The zone <clears throat> here is your grayscale. Now, this is a rough drawing of a scene. Let's outline the scene. Uh, we have clouds we have a mountain, we have a second mountain, we have trees, we have grass, water, and a building, or, or the water could be a pond or a lake or whatever, and a building structure, and then the third is your background or your sky. So to start zoning you need a couple of things. One, you're gonna have to set and do a drawing, and that drawing needs to be what's inside of your viewfinder. So I really have recommend that you get a nice steady tripod and a place that you have time to do your zone, draw your zone, and start doing your outline. Second, you're going to have to do some math. You just cannot get around zoning without doing some math. It's basic math, it's, it's basic adding and dividing, and that's, that's the extent of it. Um, and two, the th I mean the third thing we need to know what items you're going to have to have to make this happen. Well, you, of course you got your ISO here. Your shutter speed is your constant. What I mean by that is the shutter speed needs to stay the same throughout the zone or you need to be able to change it if possible if you run into a situation where you don't have apertures to work with. So let's look at our items here. I have them listed. I said list items in the scene with their F numbers. Item number one, the clouds was F22. Now what I mean by that, the reading is the clouds only. only. So I would suggest you use spot metering. Now I'm going to write that on here. Spot meter. Now that's your meter pattern that you would probably use. 
because you only thing only reading you want are the individual items with an ISO here shutter speed here second item snow caps number two F22 number three the sky the house the pond the rocks number six on the mountains of course seven is the grass eight here would have been a, another mountain and nine would be trees now this is a typical landscape scene that you may see out west or the midwest or somewhere like a scenic shot if you notice all of my numbers here are labeled according to their F numbers according to the number of the item in math or when you're dealing with math if you're going to add and then divide by the sum total of the items which is nine you're going to cancel out some of the items and in my situation I canceled out number two so we scratch number two we scratch number six because it's similar to number five so that leaves us with a total of seven items that we're going to total. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven subjects or seven items and we would then add the, add the F numbers. <clears throat> Give me a second, we're going to do the math. I just want you to see this board. And right here, the gray normal would have been your gray card reading. And what we're about to do here is what we call the zone normal. If you do this properly, those numbers should be similar in nature as far as your readings. So let's remove these items here and we're going to then, after we do our simple math, we're going to have what we call an over and an under reading. So say for instance my numbers look like this. ISO 100, 1 125th 1, of a second at F11. Let's say that's my gray normal. That would be your gray card reading. This one here is going to be established as what will be normal in terms of your overall reading. Let's say for math in, 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 uh, efficiency here that my zone normals was 1 1 25th of a second at F9. That would say let's call it our zone normal. Now this is where you start doing your math for the zone. This reading here is only for your reference. This one here is your practical number to use for your zone. Next, we need to do a two under. So ISO 100, 1 1 25th of a second at F. So the next number would be 13. That would be your zone minus 2. Next, we're going to do a 2 over 100, 1 1 25th of a second at F4.0. That's my zone plus 2. So now, as you can see, this is, I've created a bracket here. We've talked about this in a previous class. This is called bracket or breaking the rules. So there's your bracket. That's the basic foundation of your zone. Now we do what we call spreading the zone. Now spreading the zone is taking the high luminous of your scene and the low luminous of your scene and then doing the same thing we just did here. You would do a zone normal of the high luminous, a zone minus two of the high luminous, and a zone plus two of the high luminous. 
the, the, the problem you may run into is not having enough apertures on your lens to do that much zone. So where you would make that up, you would have to make it up with your shutter speed. Now, if you are not familiar with that, of course it's in my workbook how to do this. So I would take this right here as high luminous. High luminous would be your smallest aperture. Let's say high luminous was the smallest aperture in my scene was ISO 100, 1 one twenty-fifth of a second at F22. That would be the smallest aperture. This would be high luminous normal. Now I'm only going to do the high luminous. You can do the low luminous yourself. Same because it's the same thing. Let's say we're going to do one one twenty-fifth of a second. If we cannot close the aperture any more than f22, you're going to have to make it up for your high luminous under minus two. You have to change your shutter speed by two stops faster to do your minus two under. So that would make your shutter speed now one <clears throat> five hundredth of a second. That would get you your minus two under. Then to get your over, you would just come back, ISO 100, at your one one twenty fifth of a second at, so your two over would be F, it would be 16, and that would be your high luminous plus two over. This is under, this is over, under, over. So you see now how spread in that zone with the high luminous, and then you would do one more for your low luminous number. So of course your low luminous number would be your, what, your widest aperture or your smallest number. It could be a number, say, 2.8 or 4.0, but whatever the case, you would do the same thing that you did here. You would do a shot for the normal, one for the under, and one for the over. So I'm hoping that this little illustration will give you a better clarification on the zoning in terms of doing a zone and doing it in a sense to be able to show a wide enough variation in your shot that you would have ultimate contrast. Let's go back over and sit down, and we're gonna finish up. What you're gonna to wanna to take from this assignment is this. One, Ansel Adams took many years to develop the zone system. You will not be able to master the zone system the very first time that you try doing what I'm doing here. It is very, very important element, though, in terms of mastering light. It's very important and also in terms of mastering this right here, the grayscale. And it all starts with this right here, a gray card or your gray reading. So take your time. If you're not that comfortable, with the zone, go back, start over again, work it, and keep working it until you get a good zone. And by all means, you can contact me and I will help you. But as of right now, I want you to start doing your zone my way and hopefully it will make you a better photographer.